Early in March 2013, the South Bank Centre unveiled plans for a £120 million redevelopment to refresh the building and revitalise their community arts programme. As part of these plans, they also unveiled plans to transform the iconic skateboarding area under the Undercroft, move it wholesale down the river to underneath the Hungerford Bridge. Why? Because they were going to use the money to build retail units where the skate park had been to help fund the redevelopment. My reason for picking this campaign, and it's very much a community campaign, is that I feel that it should give us good heart, because you don't have to have lots of money um, to win hearts and minds. But what you do need is you need to be really good at telling stories, really good at causing disruption, and really good at creating experience. And these are the three big ideas that I'm going to build my case around. So, storytelling. Every story needs heroes and villains, and it needs conflict to drive it along. And this campaign had this in spades. It pitched a group of young skateboarders against the mighty institution of the South Bank. The next couple of slides, I'm going to share with you just a glimpse of what this story war looked like. So the first one here is a young spokesperson, a young man who had been skating in that area since he was 12 years old. And he really sets out here, I think, what's at stake. This next one is the um, South Bank um, hitting back. And I think you can tell from this how highly charged it had become. Words like a pathological campaign and we're not the dictators here. I think you can see that there was a lot of heat in this story war. And this this last one, I think, shows, I think it's a a kind of conceding defeat in a way uh, by the South Bank and showing just how hard it was for them to get a simple and compelling message out across all channels. So what did the campaigners achieve? Well, I think what they did was they created multiple ways for people to tell and share their own stories so that their stories became part of our story, our story of the campaign. And they created an empowered community of skaters, of local Lambeth residents, of Londoners, of actually a global community. People were raising money in faraway places like Canada um, for this campaign. And by doing this, they shared a sense of purpose and vision of an alternative way forward that the South Bank really didn't have to um, do what it was saying it was doing. So what do I mean by disruption? Well, this is all about being constantly interesting, generating fresh ideas and tactics, and also about confounding stereotypes, confounding conventional thinking. So the first convention that they confounded is that young people don't care. Young people are apathetic and young people are disorganised. Well, here they are organising themselves. And uh, by January of this year, 30,000 individual objections had been received by Lambeth Council, making it one of the most unpopular um, planning applications ever. So it was a campaign run by young people on behalf of us all. The next thing they confounded was that skateboarding was a minority occupation. They demonstrated that this experience went far beyond the people on their boards. They also debunked the idea that culture, some forms of culture, are more valuable than others. The South Bank tried that one and it just wouldn't wash. Really importantly, I think what they did was that they managed to bring to life a vibrant, thriving community here and now. And this was pitched against the South Bank, who were offering something far more intangible, something further away, the promise of better arts facilities. And it was a very hard story to sell. So more about disruption. So they recruited some really unusual allies. At one point, even the National Theatre came out against the South Bank. They um, told stories with and through the media. They um, recruited architects to to tell their story, social historians saying how cities work, um, and even the Mayor of London, Boris. They used some very unconventional tactics. So they they used the law to get the site declared an asset of community value. Fantastic um, tactic. And they went further than that. They looked at how they could get the site declared a village green to give it extra protection. 
So my last um, plank of my case is about experience. This is about creating emotional connections and sensory experiences. Why? Well, because human beings are fundamentally social animals. And far from rational thought informing our decisions, it's actually emotions which drive our behaviour and inform the choices we make in life. So I think what this campaign did brilliantly was to make taking action and being involved desirable and exciting. Whether it's being there in person on the South Bank, whether it was sharing content and stories on the website, whether it was blogging or being on Twitter or, or Facebook, they used the power of viral communication conversations to really drive the campaign. So at the start of this year, Boris Johnson, Johnson intervened. He threw his weight behind the campaign. And you can see here what he was saying was that the Undercroft was really part of what makes London a really special city. So a very weighty intervention. And in February, the following month, the South Bank Centre withdrew its plans um, to destroy the skate, skating area and were forced to look at alternative ways of funding their redevelopment of the centre itself. So here's the bit that's important for us here today. This is what we can learn and apply for our campaigns. Always ask ourselves, what do we want people to feel? Because it's the feelings that really matter that stay with people. Use stories to connect emotionally, because emotions are what trigger people taking action. Try and make every single contact that you have with people the best experience possible. And keep finding ways, new ways, to excite, surprise and inspire. Thank you.